In this video we're going to create a program that is mathematical in nature. The point of the program will be to find divisors. And so as I set up this program I'm going to do public class and call it divisors. And <clears throat> so it'll be doing things like this, right? So if, and let's just put a comment at the top, I'm going to do one of the multi-line comments. So slash star. And now D Dr. Java does something for me by just putting in the stars automatically. If I want to stop the comment, then I need a star slash. And so you can see that, you know, even if I had this space in here after that star, before that second slash, Dr. Java still thinks this is a comment because it turns it green. And so it's just letting you know you know where you've got mistakes. Okay, so this this will be my comment and I'm going to write my lines on here. So this program will calculate and print the divisors of a number. Okay, and that number will be input by the user. So for example, um, if the user enters 4, well then what will the divisors be? So user enters 4, um, so then the program will output the divisors. In this case, the divisors will be um, the divisors of 4. Well, we won't, we won't count 1 and 4 in this case, um, even though technically you know, they, they are divisors. But the, the only divisor then of 4 is 2, right? So it, the program would print out 2. Let's do one more example. I'm just going to copy these two lines. So we want our program then also, <coughs> if the user entered, let's say the user enters 12. Well, then the program will output the divisors in this case. Well, 2 is the divisor of 12, because 2 times 6 is 12. 3 is a divisor of 12. 4 is a divisor of 12. 6 is a divisor of 12. So 12 has four divisors, 2, 3, 4, and 6, and so our program would need to print each of these. So you may be wondering, how are we going to do this? And the answer is with a for loop. And um, we're going to be using the modulus operator again. And the modulus, modulus operator is the percent symbol. And all that does is, you know, if I did 8% 4, okay, and use the modulus operator like this, the answer would be 0, or Java would yield zero, but if I did something like five um, percent three, Java would yield two because two would be the remainder of the division problem five divided by three. So remember, modulus is that remainder. So let's get going with our program. We need our public static void main yeah public that public static void main method public static void main and then string args and our program is set up ready to go we just need to save it so I'm going to press compile it'll ask me to save automatically and I'm going to just save it in my Java examples folder and we're ready to go so again there's going to be a for loop but before we uh, create the for loop remember we are going to need input from the user which means that I am going to need to import terminal IO dot keyboard reader. And that'll just simply allow me to get that input from the user. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my keyboard reader. So I just declared it. Keyboard reader reader, this is the declaration statement. Okay, and then this part is what we call in um, instantiation. So I'm going to do new keyboard reader and that this is what we call instantiation. So I actually created an instance of keyboard reader and assigned it to that variable. So now I'm going to um, I'm, I'm ready to make my for loop and ready to start having the user input um, input a number so that uh, so that the for loop will go through and calculate the divisors for that number. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that I'm going to call it an int and I'm going to call it limit, or you know what I'll call it I'll just call it number, because this is the one that the user's typing in. So int number. On the next line, I, I will initialize number, number equals reader, 
dot read int so the user will type in a value and it will save it in int now I th just as general programming practice um, especially as you're getting comfortable with things start checking your work so I'm going to do a system dot out dot print line um, and I'm just going to print out number okay this this is just a quick and easy way for me to check to make sure my program is working so far and already I can see there's an error so I, I messed up here there I, this is not the correct way to do an import statement. Okay, I put in the parentheses, um, which I shouldn't have. Okay, this is not this is not a call to a method, even though it kind of looks like it. Dot keyboard reader. That's actually just the syntax that we use for importing a class. In this case, I imported the class terminal. I imported the class keyboard reader from the package terminal I/O. All right. So, compile again and it works and I'll run my program it's asking me for input so if I type in 5 okay, it just printed back out it printed out 5 but now we need to instead of having this print line statement and I'm just going to comment this one out because maybe I'll want to use it later and now I need to start ri writing my for loop so remembering the syntax for the for loop it looks like this and, and then inside inside of these parentheses there are three parts the first part is where I say what variable I'm using and I make sure it's initialized in the middle part I'm going to say the condition so how when will this for loop stop basically and in the last part I'm going to say how much is that counter that I'm using going to increment by each time through the loop and so in this time this time through I'm just going to um, I'm going to call my counter counter um, and I'm going to set it equal to zero now because counter has not been declared anywhere else in the program yet I actually have to declare it here so I'm going to do int counter okay. <clears throat> and now in the condition I'm going to I'm going to go until counter is less than number okay so counter is less than number number is what was input by the user and then in the last part, I'm going to do counter equals counter plus one. So that every time through the loop, the counter just increments by one. Now, I'm actually going to change this to start writing this a little bit shorter. Um, usually I like writing things out the long way just because I think it's more clear. But instead of doing counter equals counter plus one, it just saves us some room in our for loop to, uh, to do it like this. So counter plus plus does the same thing. Okay now inside of my for loop again I just want to test to see if this is working so system.out.println and I'm going to print out counter okay, just to see if this for loop is working compile seems to be working I'm going to run and I'll type in 5 again okay. and as soon as I press enter it prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 which should make sense and if it doesn't, take time to step through the for loop. So first time through, counter was zero, so it printed out zero. Second time through, it was one, and so on and so forth. And the reason we didn't print out five, why, it, why did it stop at four? Well, when counter got to be five, counter is no longer less than number. And so that evaluates to false, and we break out of the for loop. So it actually never goes through the for loop when counter is five. When counter is four is the last time. Okay, keeping this in mind, we want to start to write code that will calculate divisors. And this, and you might be wondering, how in the world are we going to do that? Well, you know if a number is a divisor if that modulus operator that I talked about earlier up here, okay, if it, the modulus is zero. So if I do something like, for example, number modulus counter, if that is equal to zero and remember when we compare values we use equals equals okay that's the comparison operator so I'm going to do if this is my if statement number percent counter equals equals zero so in this time for example we had the number if we used the number five and so you can imagine five and let's imagine the first time through counter is counter is zero uh oh that's going to be a problem because you cannot you can never divide by zero so already we figure, oh, we should probably switch this from 0 to 1. And if you wanted to test counter at 0, go right ahead and see what happens. Um, so let's change it to 1. 
Okay, well number percent counter, so that's going to be number divided by the counter, which is 1, so 5 divided by 1. Well, what's the remainder? The remainder of that is 0, and so it's going to, this little expression right here is going to give you 0, and does 0 equal 0? Well, yes. So if, if that is true, then I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy and paste this. It'll print out whatever the counter was. And now, the next time through the loop, counter will be 2. So imagine, 5 divided by 2. Is that going to work out? Is that going to, re is that going to have a remainder of 0? No, it won't. The remainder of 5 divided by 2 is 1. So this would not evaluate to true, and that, therefore this print line statement would never happen. The next time through, counter would be 3 then. So number percent 3, basically, so 5 percent 3, or 5 and then the modulus operator, 3. Um, that won't work either, because you'll have a remainder of 2. And 4 won't work either, because you'll have a remainder as well. And, and it turns out that the only number that should be printed out here is 1. Let's try it. Okay, so if I type in 5, the only number it printed was 1. But let's try something else. Because remember up here I said, for my examples, I gave 4 and 12. And I said, well, 4 should print out 2, and 12 should print out 2, 3, 4, and 6. Um, but before we go, we already noticed that, well, technically, from what I said at the very beginning of the problem, we don't even really want to print out 1, because we know that 1 is going to work for all numbers. 1 will be a divisor of no matter what integer you put in there, 1 will be a divisor. So let's start our counter then instead of at 1, but at 2. All right. And let's rerun the let's compile and rerun the program, but with those test cases. So the test cases are going to be four and twelve. Four, good. It only prints out two. Two is the only divisor. Let's run again, and let's try twelve. Good. It printed out two, three, four, and six, which is what I wanted. And it turns out we could do all sorts of big numbers. For example, let's let's pick something very big. Let's pick something like. 32,592. Okay, and if we wanted to see the, the divisors of that number, well, here they are. 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. Well, that's actually interesting. That was all those in a row. Um, 12, 14, 16, 21, and so on. And you can see them all the way down. The biggest divisor, then, is 16,256. Okay. Now, you'll notice that 16,296 uh, 296 is this is basically paired up with 2 because 2 times this number will give us um, the number we initially put in which was 32,592 and so all of these really occur in pairs okay that is paired up with 3 4 is paired up with well then the third from the bottom 4 is paired up with this one and and so normally all of our factors occur in pairs. But let me just point out something that's kind of cool about this. If I type in 16, you'll notice that they cannot be in pairs. Well, 2 times 8, that's not my pair, because 2 times 8 is 16. But we've got this 4 all by itself. Um, and, so, and the reason for that is because 16 is a perfect square. And so it turns out that the only time you're not going to have numbers paired up like this um, is going to be when you have perfect squares. So when you create this program, please just play around with it, test it out, and see what else it can do. And as an extra challenge, see if you can rewrite this for loop to be a little bit more efficient. Because so far, we're testing all of the values that are less than number. And really, there's no reason we need to be testing all of these values. For example, um, if, we look at this, if we look at this one, would we really have needed to test any value above 8? Would we have needed to test 9, 10, 11, 12? And so see if you can make your for loop even more efficient.